Right, arguably one of the most sort of uh, requested reviews that I haven't done as yet, and that's the new irons from Cobra. I brought them outside for some testing on a par three course here at Four Golf. We'll get them inside in terms of some uh, dry ball data. And I'll let you know what I think about this, because it is, to be fair, a little bit different, and it's 3D printed, you know. I've no idea what that means. I haven't either, I've just read it on the back. Right, in recent, uh, well probably the last few years to be fair, Cobra have made massive strides in every market and in recent weeks they've even released uh, some putters which are getting some good mentions. So I thought it was about time we had a revisit and paid some attention to their new irons. The kind of rad speed range has been again mega mega popular, it hits a massive price point in terms of popularity in that sense. It's on the cheaper end, but it performs incredibly well. Although I can't back that up myself because I've not tested it. But the irons are really interesting for me from speaking to the team here at Fogel. There's a lot of interest in them. From reading comments online, there's a lot of interest in them. So I thought it was about time, as an average golfer, we give them a bit of a go. So what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, I'll hit some balls behind me very, very shortly. The thing I want to say, first of all, is in terms of the looks. I think that Cobra have gone for a more, let's say, a more modern look. They're bright and bold in what they do. I think the players that they have on board are bright and bold in terms of their team. So for me, it kind of is maybe aimed at a slightly younger audience and I applaud Cobra for doing that. For me, maybe falling into that slightly older category, I don't know whether that's the case, but in terms of visually, it's okay. I mean, it's 3D printed, I don't know what it means. And I'm, I, I've, uh, I've no idea what this, whether it refers to this plastic element in the back. It's not my cup of tea, I'll be honest with you, it looks okay. And there's a big difference in terms of the top line. They've got some kind of like carbon look at the top. Visually, I don't mind it because it almost sort of uh, insinuates a sort of slightly thinner top line than what is actually there because it's quite hefty. So maybe visually that works. So overall, personally, okay in terms of looks, but not something I'm going to pick up and try. But we all know looks don't do nothing. It's all about the way it performs. So I'll hit some balls and give you some feedback. Right, so first a few balls off the turf. Like I've just mentioned, it actually doesn't look too bad in terms of profile because I'd still class this as a game improvement. I, I'm not sure what Cobra do, but sort of uh, heel to toe overall profile, fairly compact. And I do like what I've said, that sort of carbon material that's placed in that top line does tend to thin it out of it. So visually, it's quite good. We're playing on what is a bit of a hybrid course here to try and get us a yardage over to a pin across the fairways and... Uh, not where we normally always should be playing, but we're early morning, nobody about, and uh, we'll try and hit a green. That's bang on. Oh, you'll pick that ball flight up. <laughs> We've got the yardage spot on. Interestingly enough, and I always do this, is a bit that baffles me a little bit. Well, it doesn't baffle me, I understand it. I've just marked out sort of 160 pin, just over 162 pin, which I think we've hit pin high there. Um, in dry ball data, it comes out just a little bit longer than that. Again, strong lofted iron. But for me, what you play on the course and what you hit in terms of dry ball data in a driving range are often two totally different things. It's a lot easier and a lot freer the swing when you've not got to worry about obstacles in the way. In terms of how the ball went off, good. Launch is incredibly high and I love what it does in terms of performance. I'm going to switch you back inside for a second and I've picked up some audio on how these things strike. Place the microphone close to the ball and see what you think in terms of the sound that comes off these things. That could be two from two, you know, they're bang on. <laughs> the only trouble is you never do this in, uh, in reality when you're out on the fairways or the real fairways when it matters, a scorecard in hand. Going back to the audio, the reason I picked that up, um, for me, the clubs perform incredibly well in terms of what I'd be looking at in terms of dry ball data. And we might as well get into that now because if you see a cross section of shots, it does well. There's a few variables in there in terms of ball speed, which sort of suggest that off center it's and when I've not quite got it right it's not quite as forgiving as I would have liked to have seen because there is a drop off between the ball speeds and it's quite a bit but in, in terms of how high the ball launches if that's where you're looking for some assistance again 
ball goes into orbit. It's got a decent spin number on again for the strength of loft this is. So again, defies all that nonsense about strong lofted irons and how they're low spinning and all the rest of it. That's not what happens in these clubs anymore. So a good spin number, great launch angle, great descent angle as you can see, and a great carry distance. The problem for me, I go back to the sound. It's incredibly, what I don't know what the word, sharp is on the ears. And again, I've not heard back that audio that we recorded before. So maybe we picked it up, maybe we didn't. Little bit loud for me, little bit harsh and would be the one major negative. Other than that, I've only got a seven iron in hand, but it'd be very hard to find a criticism in these irons at this stage. Right, so I'm going to overlay three shots with just some, uh, unfortunately I don't have a full set to test with, so I've only got seven iron. I always, one of the things, I, Cobra don't send me anything direct, so it, it's very difficult for me to test because what manufacturers do is if you've got a pitching wedge, if I've got a seven iron, if I've got a long iron, I feel I can give a better appraisal in terms of a product review. And in this case, we just wait till the products come into four golf. Therefore, I'm late in terms of testing. Therefore, I've only got a seven iron and it becomes not a lot I can do. But we do our best with what we've got. And I've just tried a few chip and runs here with a seven iron. Again, not, uh, not ideal. But the, reason, the thing I wanted to test was in terms of feel. And although I said uh, pretty much negative in terms of either sound, which often resonates in feel, what you'll see from the three ch chip shots or chip and runs is we was able to adapt to what we were seeing and what we were feeling. So the first two were a little bit long and again, fired out there. It is a bit fiery off the face, but again, third shot, a little bit closer. And again, that to me tells me that I'm getting something back into the hands, which means the feel element, although the sound isn't great from a feel perspective, it's kind of okay and certainly for the category that it falls into so the final question is this for me it's again it's the cobra thing and how many of you are influenced by the price point that cobra have come in by because i think that's one of the most impressive things and then going back to the looks again what are your thoughts and uh, are you similar to me and you think that it's more aimed at a younger audience i don't know it might be a complete um misunderstanding from my perspective in terms of what i'm seeing and finally, the thing I want to mention is about the Average Golfers Club. I'm determined to mention it on every video I do from now on. And it's really important for members that get, effectively, the major deal they get is 10% off all the products that I review. Any product that's available out there in the golf world right now, 4Golf give you 10% by being a member of the Average Golfers Club. Way to find out more details is theaveragegolfer.co.uk and I'll stick some... Um, I'll stick a link down below, but honestly, so many golfers are saving themselves, as well as other things, they're saving a heck of a lot of money off their new golf products at the minute. Right, that's me done. We're finished. It's, uh, it's not too bad in terms of weather. I think we've just avoided the rain. It's another review from the average golfer, and I think my overall assessment in terms of the product would be certainly well worth a try. If that's the category you're looking for in terms of the product, then give it a whirl. For me, the sound and the looks, not my cup of tea, but uh, will still appeal to plenty. Hey? It is a David Amber moment, but seriously, it's uh, this is probably the most um, interesting part of the review so far. If that doesn't move on that fence post, that's not false, by the way. It looks like an owl of some sort. Yeah, it's an owl. It's an owl. How pretty is that? You need to get close enough because that lens isn't uh, catching him. That needs to fly off because I'm thinking it's false. Yeah. Oh my god, it's not false, you know. That's real. It's false. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's really tame, really. <laughs> Nah, it's not bothered one bit. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs>